Ready? Finale, season two, episode 10. Zach and Josh. The Zach and Josh sold. Yo, it's Crackin' Fools. You know who it is. Big Bad Sam Rock back at it again here with the season finale. And, you know, I, I'm super excited to do this uh, this episode because we've been having a lot of fan uh, fanfare feedback. My, the inboxes have been full with who are the people behind the scenes. We want to know more about Zach. We want to know more about Josh. As I do, too. I would like to know more about, uh, you know, the podcast team. So let's get into this. First, Josh, introduce yourself to our to our uh, audience. Hello, everyone. I'm Josh Mandel. I'm the uh, cinematographer mm -hmm. of this great podcast. Uh, local DP, cinematographer, photographer, time lapse editor here in Chicago. Jack of all trades, doing it all. Doing it all. Yeah. All right. Zach, try to follow up that. No, he took up a lot of the uh, <laughs> terms. I am Zach Rand. I do a bunch of random stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how else to describe myself or what I do. Uh, audio. I do audio. I make music, photography, ceramics. Yeah. Uh, what else? That's all I can think about. Top of my head right now. Audio and ceramics. Yeah. It's pretty eclectic. Make sure everyone sounds nice here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what I do here. All right. Let's start off with this question. <laughs> um, we'll, go, we'll go Zach and then Josh. So why did you agree to do this podcast with me? Dude. Or why did you want... To, okay, dude, don't, don't start. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, did, well, why did you stay for the entire season? <laughs> what kept you around? The, the first one or the second one? Uh... You were a part of season one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Second one then. <laughs> um, why stay? Like, what? Yeah, yeah. Like, what? Because you DM'd me, like, yo, if you need help. So, what was, like, I'm always curious, like, what motivate, mo motivated you to do that? To DM you? Yeah, like, yo, you need help. Let me know. Oh, well, it was, it was really random because I seen you post something on Instagram. It was a SoundCloud link to, I think it might have been, um, Haley or Renzi's episode? Yeah, those are my first two guests. And I, and I checked it out, and I liked the content, but the oh. audio was... <laughs> it was, was like nails on a chalkboard for you? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. So I was like, it. man, this guy needs some better audio. Yeah. I'm like, I got to reach out. And surprisingly, you, you uh, DM me back. Yeah, well, you're like, the only person to DM my SoundCloud account. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I made sure. I was like, oh, no, I got to, like, really try to help this guy out. Because oh, I DM'd yeah. you on Instagram, then I also DM'd you on SoundCloud. I was like, ooh, SoundCloud message? What's this about? <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, yeah. I was quick. <laughs> All right. Uh, Josh? Well, you had told me... I've been shooting with you for a few years, mm -hmm. and you had told me that you were getting in you know, into the podcast and starting to do that. So I don't really know how it all started, but I guess what, you know, what do you like about it? Like, well, the I'll, I'll say this, the difference between season one and two season one, we weren't doing the YouTube videos yet. So we trailers. were just like a little trailers, but I had, I was recording the entire, uh, episodes anyway. Um, so I was excited to come to do season two and release those, you know, YouTube videos, yeah. have the have the episodes on another platform. I felt like people didn't really feel like the podcast was a real thing until we started doing the YouTube. And They're like, like, oh, if, this is real. Like, okay. If you're on, if you're you only on the on the the audio streaming ser services, yeah. they don't take you. You're, you're halfway there. Mm -hmm. You need to have the YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Um, Let's see. Were you guys? Were Let you, me ask you something. What, what uh, made you want to? <laughs> this guy. It's a wonder that we get stuck around this long, right? I'm shocked. <laughs> what made you want to start it? Um, why did I want to start it? I don't even remember. I think 
Well, you know what it was, what kind of started it is I just had so many like dope artists and creatives come by my studio. And I remember having conversations with artists and just like generally wanting to know and then having dope conversations. I'm like, man, I feel like we should record these, like document some of these conversations that I'm having with my peers because I feel like other people can learn from it. And I think just connecting and creating those moments of like with the podcast. So, you know, I started off with just the audio really bad. I just hooked it up to my laptop and it was bad. But like you said, the content was dope. Like these conversations were really cool. And I was like, this is cool. And then it just started to like develop into what it is now. Did, did you have any anticipation of it getting to this point? I guess. I guess. Um, I really, I don't even know what this point is. I mm. guess just in like the production, I guess. Production quality, yeah, yeah. Um, and even having this many episodes. Well, yeah. I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. So if it wasn't for you two, right. I would just, <laughs> you know, it, it it wouldn't be where it's at today. So if you like, if you like the videos and everything, you gotta thank these two because it wouldn't be happening without them. Um, no, Josh, Josh definitely pulled through with all mm-hmm. these cameras and equipment. I mean, and, at this during season two, it was like every, the first few episodes we were adding cameras. Yeah. It was a new another camera every episode. Yeah, I was like, getting Zach the lights, Zach changing the Zach Cam. Yeah, the lights and everything. And the people love Zach Cam. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, let's, let, um, what you you guys want to talk a little bit about like so because you guys are both very professional what you do and then how did you get to this point? Because uh, you know. Any production that's dope, it's because the people behind the scenes that are making it happen. And you guys are, you know, high quality um, individuals. So how did you guys get to this point of your guys' career or or craft? Josh, go. Well, <laughs> um, I've been working in film and video for like seven, eight years now. Mm-hmm. Pretty much fully freelance. Um and doing everything from like music videos, short films to the less enjoyable corporate work, stuff like that. But um, it's really just been a lot of networking through all this time. And like every single shoot that I'm on has been a learning experience and it still is. Um, So yeah, I mean, it's, you just kind of, for me at least, I, you know, started out and was doing a lot of like doing some short narrative stuff music videos here and there Mm -hmm. but kind of gravitated more towards like corporate work um which it's not as fun but it pays the bills Mm -hmm. um but that doing that you know we linked up a few years ago you posted on instagram or like any photographers or videographers available and that's just like just like zach slid in the dms and like that was the uh, Yolo Kali wall. Um, I think that was right across the street there mm-hmm. in their like community garden. I'd be popping in the DMs. Manny was, Manny was over there. And uh, yeah, it was like, hey, hey, like I shoot a lot of time lapse. And that's what that video mostly was. So that was, you know, and at that point, I would just like kind of like needed that more of a creative project to work on to kind of break that, you know, it's. The corporate stuff is good. Keep, like I said, it keeps the lights on. But you know, to be able to work with people like you and you've hooked me up with a lot of other artists, and that like keeps the creative juices flowing for sure. Yeah, that's a great answer. That was a good one. I know. Like, oh, I don't know if it answered your question. <laughs> no, it was a good answer. Uh, for me, it's always started with audio. Like I used to make music when I was not used to. I still make music when I was a uh, probably. 13 14 or something like that like my cousin showed me how to make music mm-hmm. and from there i just kind of just developed knowledge i guess about audio mm-hmm. then most recently you were 13 yeah or probably maybe younger honestly yeah that's dope it was just something i was super interested in and just like just dove way too far to to for for the better really yeah. um yeah for sure yeah it kept me super busy um but it wasn't until recently people started reaching out to me because I had like the knowledge of audio and all that kind of stuff. Like I helped out somebody else with a podcast that he didn't know how to do anything about it. And I was like, oh, this is super easy. 
all you just have to do is all these different things. I just, just, it's like second nature to me at this point. So when I seen your stuff, I was like, oh, I know how to do that. I was like, I just need to get some better equipment because I didn't have these things at that point, but I knew what I needed. Right. So when I seen you post that uh, SoundCloud link, I was like, oh, I just got to get some better equipment real quick. So I got some shit or stuff. And I was like, oh, let me just pull, come up or show you what I got. Do you, do, what's the difference between like music and podcast audio? Like, uh, is it a lot? Is it very uh, contrast for you or is it kind of one and the same? Um, well, for me, it, for whenever I make music, it, I don't like I don't rap or sing or anything like that. So it's just like all production. So I know like the technical aspect of it, but I never really like recorded vocals by myself, I guess, if that makes sense. But I know how to do it. But in practice, kind of, if that makes sense. Would you ever want to be a producer? Uh, uh, as, as far as like, as far as, as far in what aspect? In, in like, Just like music or I don't know. I guess that's a question for both of you. Like what is kind of like a a goal or like um something that you would like to achieve with your craft oh, that you man. feel like you haven't done yet or maybe you've done a little bit but you're like i haven't fully touched on what i really want to achieve there, there's a lot of different things that i want to achieve in different in different uh mediums i guess mm-hmm. but with audio um for a for a hot for a minute before covid i was like I guess networking, I guess, like with different musicians. Cause like to at a certain point, I felt like I was hitting a, a ceiling with music. So I was like, oh, I need to collaborate with people. Like with like actual not actual musicians, but musicians that are like really good at that craft right. with that instrument. So I was starting to meet more uh musicians and stuff like that. Then I was like trying to collaborate with them, have them, you know, come through or whatever and like just make music. Mm-hmm. So I was like that aspect, that's what I would want to do because like I feel like I have something in my head and I want to get it out and I want to see where somebody else could like elevate it even more mm-hmm. in that aspect with audio, I guess, if that mm. makes sense. Kind of makes sense a little bit. Yeah. Pretty, that's pretty general, I suppose. Well, I mean, it could, be, it could be very specific, but it's just like create something really good that's a song, I guess. A song. Yeah. Okay. A song with or, a, with or a artist, like a vocalist. I don't know what this word, but, but there's like multiple people. <laughs> like there's uh, Steely Dan has an album where they Ooh, didn't Steely Dan where they didn't um, going way back where they didn't. You're an old soul, bro. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Where they didn't um, touch any instruments. The cyber webs. They just <laughs> they didn't. Um, yeah, they didn't touch any instruments, but they hired like the best musicians that they knew. Yeah. And they produced it in that aspect. So that that's that's kind of like your. Um, your like marker of like super creative, successful to me, yeah, yeah. I'm just, like, that as a person or as a band, as a band. Uh, I mean, that was just an example. Okay, but uh, a better example could be like Kanye West. You know how he collaborates with like a shit ton of people right. for like a one song, right? You know, just to get get it to like That's dope. the highest level that it could possibly be at. Yeah, Josh. Uh, I guess for me. It would just be, you know, I mean, I guess the the top for me in my career, what I would like to be is, you know, a DP on probably... You got to tell us what that means. A director of photography, mm. cinematographer. Um, when, I, when you say uh, photography, I think of photos. Right. Is it just photos? No, it's video. Is yeah, it video I mean, or like film, you know, that's just the mm. cinematographer, director of photography is the same. Yeah. Same term, essentially. Um, I feel like at the end of movies when they have the the credits, they, yeah. there's like so many different like titles, and I'm there like, are. what does? It's always Google like the director, and then you know the executive producers, yeah. the ones overseeing the, the overall vin- uh, vision, as well as getting the money for it. Um, director of photography is a little lower down the line there, but. They're primo job. They're above everyone else. Yeah. They're above, you know, the You're rest like of the crew. Second to so. director, right? Kind of. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's a little. It's a little complicated, but they're up there. Yeah. Um, but for me, I'd like to be doing that. On like, I like commercial work. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so like I work on a, I do work with a bunch of, with a um, production company here that does a lot of like social media campaigns and like smaller level commercials and stuff. So those kinds of shoots are always just fun for me. Um, so to shoot bigger commercials like national yeah. spots would be awesome. Also to start making money through my time yeah, lapse that. work. Um, so is there, is there money in time lapse? Yeah, I mean, you know, like if you see a show or a movie or commercial or anything that yeah. has like just like a that time lapse scene, shot, yeah, like, or something yeah. like that, you know, that's probably like essentially one person or a small crew of people yeah. that went and, you know, got a day's work, day's rate for just like capturing this one shot. Or maybe, and I don't even know if like at that level, it's like they went for like a week to get mm -hmm. that one shot. That you one know where there's money too? Have you ever, has anybody ever hit you up to buy like uh, a video off your YouTube? I've got, I've been hit up for like people have like seeing some of my time lapse on like Vimeo or something mm -hmm. like that, or been like, hey, like, do you have any time lapse shots of Chicago? Vimeo that kind is of stuff. That, huh? Yeah. Vimeo like, is, is like a more professional YouTube. just like YouTube. everybody throws everything. We love Vimeo the YouTube is like, viewers. But um, yeah, but Vimeo is like where the creatives are on. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember on. one time I had a video. I don't even know what it was. It was just me like time lapse painting myself of me, of me, and uh, somebody hit me up for a commercial. They wanted to use like literally like a second, like three seconds of me just like like painting something. Yeah. And then they're like, "Yo, can we use this? You know, whatever, whatever." And this was you know you know like six years ago. And I was like, "Yeah, sure, I don't care." They're like, "All right, well, we could give you three k." I was like, ooh, okay, for three seconds. What? I was like, sure. yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. But and then I come to find out it happened a few more times and that they were like, you know, in the three, five, seven K for like a split second of like not my videos, but sometimes like a glimpse of my wall or something. And it's like, yo, that's crazy. Like these budgets are they can be, you know, Send me decent. those people information. I can give them some few second shots. It was NBC and Netflix. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> wait, yeah. you, wait, this is on Vimeo or YouTube? Um, well, the first one that I did, it was a commercial, like a national commercial for like an insurance company. And I don't know why they wanted a, a quick image. They were doing like this montage of like people skating, painting, playing basketball. And I guess cool what stuff. they did, yeah, I guess what they did is they just ripped a bunch of videos off uh, like Vimeo. And they got to pay for the rights, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And you just... That was not your intent initially. It was just kind of. I like would have just been happy to be on TV, you know? <laughs> like a quick second, and it came up a lot. It was, I remember the Cavs were playing the Bulls, so that was a while ago okay. in the playoffs, and it and that commercial kept coming up, and I was like, oh, that's dope. You just probably and then to know you got paid for that. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool. Does that kind of stuff happen to you a lot, where you just kind of like do something and someone's like, oh, yo, let me. Not a lot, no. But like sometimes if they're using my wall, the mm -hmm. most random one that happened is um, Chicago Fire, NBC hit me up and I had painted an abandoned building just to, you know, abandoned building, you're supposed to go paint it. And then they were filming in this abandoned building and then they hit me up like, yo, is this you? And at first I was like, maybe he was asking <laughs> like <laughs> they're like, oh, we're the crew for like Chicago Fire, we just need to get clearance. Yeah. And then they just, just by them knowing my art, you know, they hit me oh, up. That's cool. And then they paid me. Now it's a little bit different. Before they used to really cut checks. Now they have like middle people that are like this like broker company, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. But yeah, that's probably the most random one. That's so interesting. What does that look like when NBC hits you up? Is that like an email? Or something? It's typically somebody who represents NBC. It's not like somebody at NBC. Oh, yeah. It's like if that was different. Like sometimes they'll film in the neighborhoods, you know, and then they'll come to everybody in the neighborhood. But I painted the back house and they wanted to use the mural that was in the back house. Really? Okay. That was for the intro of the shy in season one. Yeah, it was dope. I mean, that, that ain't going to like sustain you, but it's cool little bonus oh, checks. Yeah, you know? totally. yeah. It's yeah. visibility. It's getting paid visibility, for something you've yeah. already done. Exactly. And if it's like, and you it know, lasts forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big deal. That's How cool. did we get here?
I don't know. I was trying to talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> trying to pick your guys' brains. We're, turn, brain. we're turning this around. I know. You yeah, are right. asking people <laughs> questions every week. We're going to ask you questions. All right. So how does it feel to be a part of the hottest podcast in Chicago? Sorry. Okay. It's pretty cool. How are the I mean, perks? You know, you walk around, people are like, oh, that's Josh from the Scent Rock pod. I come for the Topo Chico. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, good... Uh, <clears throat> okay, next question. All right. <laughs> Has any, any anything good come from it? <sighs> Not really. Sure. Not good. Sure. <laughs> no, I I think honestly, I got some new followers on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think in a weird oh, in a weird way it. Uh... This is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad season finale. <laughs> in a weird way, it like. Validated what I do to other people. Uh, They're like, "Oh wow, it's so oh, good. That's you so cool. do something." Exactly. I was like, "I've been doing something like this for a while." But, yeah, but like, people gotta see it. They gotta hear it. They yeah. gotta see it. They gotta be able to feel it. You know, I feel like us working with so much creatives, like that's something that people can feel it has impact. Yeah. I mean, you it's know? it's nice to like put out a you know some content every week. Yeah. Um. You know, like we've had a great rhythm and workflow and doing all this so I you almost were gonna say we had a great run i was like oh my god it's over <laughs> it's still <laughs> going <laughs> uh, we've had a great run nah, guys <laughs> uh so it is nice you know like i'm not constantly like putting my own work out right. there Same. so you know it is like you said like getting recognition of like oh this is what you do so you know <laughs> um stuff like that and but like also like i've run into other people you know that are yeah. kind of within the same circles and they're like oh like seeing you been you guys have been out there like doing a lot of work doing these these podcasts and it's Didn't like you, you guys are really non-compete clauses before they <laughs> <laughs> i was talking to somebody the other day uh-huh and they were talking they were talking about nico's uh podcast and they're like oh that's your like that was your voice i was like what like you didn't know that <laughs> Wait, what? They didn't well, know that. They didn't if they know. watched, if they watched the video, I they'd know, see your face too. They should have watched it. But they, so Nico's podcast. No, oh, no, no, Nico no, watched Nico's, Nico's episode. episode. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, Episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're like, that was your voice. I was like, yeah. They had no idea. Oh, they're just listening. Yeah. Like, That's pretty that cool. That was you. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of cool. I was like, oh shit. You've done a good job from being like just the audio guy to like weasel your way in. On camera, <laughs> I've been trying since the first episode. Weasel is no, way you, you, you have good insight, yeah. and I feel like it's helped me. Like when I've been like stumped, or just somebody that I can like bounce off of, yeah. you know. So they're just in there smiling sometimes. I feel. So like. let me ask you this: I'm I'm very social media driven, but you guys aren't so much. It's, this I'm is very a fact. perplexed by this as <laughs> creative. So uh, I feel I feel like you know I'm a I'm I don't know if this is like a good or a bad soul. thing for myself. I'm just nah, I'm like genuinely that. curious. But like, and I I think I've talked to you about this, but like I'm not the kind of like photographer or deep or cinematographer, whatever you want to call that is like walking around with a camera on me mm. all the time. Um, that doesn't mean I don't like taking pictures, right. but like I don't know, I just. I, so I'm not like always out there getting, you know, taking photos or videos mm -hmm. of whatever it may be. And Have then, you ever like, had that pressure that to be like that person? Um, I think only like when I was in film school that they were like, you know, go out there, take as many pictures and videos as you can. That's, and it, it is like the best way to learn. But I feel like there's, you know, the kind of, mixing like work and play there where you know it's not like when i when i go to a shoot and i have my camera and i'm shooting at it like really feels like work i enjoy what i'm doing but it's i don't know it's like i don't want to be out like with a camera all the time like i'm not like at family events and like taking photos you know like i'm like no nah, i don't really want to do that slow -mo. yeah <laughs> um so i don't know i just camera. i just feel like i don't have I'm not like that present on social media because I'm not like creating my own stuff that That's much. That's not how you really channel your yeah. creativity. Yeah. Which I, 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 like I said, I'm curious because 
I feel like there's a lot of creatives that feel the pressure to be very social media mm-hmm. driven or always like output, output. And but you guys are both very talented, but you're not driven by trying to like look what I did today. Look at this. Look at this. You know. Yeah, I think there's a lot of like when you start posting frequently like that, you mm-hmm. and like if you have a following, you have more of that pressure to keep it up. Yeah. 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 I think that's important for younger creatives that. You know, if, if they work that way, like, you know, you don't have to feel like I have to be like this. This is how every other creative works because it's not true, you know, like. Oh, I feel um, for me, I feel like I just have this ADD with this creativity. Mm-hmm. Where I'm just like super into one thing that changes all the time. Yeah. And I just don't have. Like, uh, I, I've also posted stuff, too, uh, just on different channels, I guess. Yeah. Um, but just don't show anybody, I guess. I don't know, for whatever reason, I don't know if that's like a deep thing or not. I don't know. Is it just because you just like to create it for yourself and you're like, all right, cool, I did that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I think I, I like the challenge of creating certain things that I see. Where I'm I like, started- oh, let me, like this table, for example. Yeah. Seeing this table, I'm like, I want to know how this is done. Try yeah. to figure it out. <laughs> see if I can make something like it, create it, then like move on to the next thing. That's interesting. I feel that way when I started working with like ad agencies and marketing agencies, they have super creative graphic designers, super creative uh, video photographers. And then you go to the Instagram and you know, it's like very dead. And it's like, it's like, Oh, you don't care to channel your work through here per se. Like you're very, you put it into your work and you come out with this very dope quality product in the end. So that's when I was, cause for me, I'm like, I'm very like, I need the people to see this right now. Like, <laughs> look sometimes at what it, I did. Sometimes it's got to be, you know, like in the moment. You yeah. Know? I I say this. I got like, I probably got hard drives like full of footage that I've shot for myself, time lapses or just like whatever video. And then it's like when it comes time to editing it, I'm just like, I don't want it put it together or like I don't know how I'm gonna at what I'm gonna edit this into or something like that you know because editing is like secondary for me is that in, in your in, photos those two different work. jobs sometimes yeah, they can yeah. Be? Okay. so like you know my favorite jobs are gonna be like bigger like agency work and stuff where I'm hired for the day shoot it hand off the footage and typically, I never even see the the final product. That sounds great. Uh, it's it's <laughs> nice. That's what you love too. You love the shooting. I part like of it. I love the shooting. But then, like you know, if I'm you know working, doing you know shooting a mural or doing work for like a, a small a small company or store or something, mm-hmm. then I'm shooting that. I'm editing that, and the editing is kind of what I dread. You know, it, I need a few days to like stay away from what I shot and like, let that like kind of just like get out of my system. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll get back to it. And yeah, it's like, it's unless I have like a really tight deadline, it's hard to like just dive right into the edit. edit. Sometimes I need to like, let it, I'll I'll think about it for days about everything I shot and how I'm going to. Does it, does it ever feel like uh, when you, when you edit stuff like that, does it ever feel like you didn't shoot it? You're like, who shot this? No. No? Usually, oh, I mean, okay. oh. usually, no, usually I'm like, where is this shot? Where is this shot? Because like when I'm shooting, and that's something that I learned too through school is like, you know, sh- you know, when you're shooting, plan it out as if you're an editor, you know, so that like you have all of the shots you need to tell this story, all the coverage you need, and that like, you know, going from this shot to this one is going to make sense kind of a thing so well for for me with music i i feel like i have waves of just different things i'm into throughout the year so i might make something in the beginning of the year that might go back to it in like september december then i'm like what the hell like, what, me? what was i thinking yeah so sometimes <laughs> in a bad way but also sometimes in a good way i'm like this is so dope like this, this is tight sometimes yeah. but do you think that comes from for uh, wanting people to see it from like graffiti because it's so immediate or can be immediate? Um, I think because at the end of the day, my work, I'm not in love. Like I love art, but I'm not, I don't feel like I'm one of these artists that is just like, I'm such an artist. I want to go to art school. I want to love painting. Really? Like I fell in love with the idea of 
of communication, communicating what I have in my head with somebody else without words per se. So it's like, all right, if I could go, yeah, I started off doing graffiti. I communicated this image on the wall that expresses, hey, you can go out and paint whatever you feel like, you know? And then with my art now with social media, I could put something out, it reaches thousands of people. And I feel like the idea of communicating, you know, whether it's just like me getting something off my own personal head or mm-hmm. somebody, or I feel like, all right, maybe somebody can relate to this. I think the, cra- the crazy part to me is how, uh, how talented you are and able to get something from your head to the canvas mm-hmm. and it just seems so natural. Mm-hmm. And make it you can make it look easy. Make it look easy, yeah. That's right. the goal for when, sure. When yeah. you were doing your sketch a day in May, mm-hmm. like you would take a picture, you know, after we would shoot one of these, yeah. and then like the next day <laughs> I would wake up and there's yeah. this like insane sketch, you know, yeah. picture that you did that's has just has so much detail in it. And yeah. I'm like, you know, that's where you can tell that's like just flowing straight out of your brain. Oh, man. Through I love that stuff. Detail? You know, yeah, and like, because like that wasn't like just like one figure yeah. on a blank plane, you know, like. Yeah. It was detailed and the part yeah. that impresses me is that it's stylized. It's mm-hmm. your own yeah. style. Yeah. Which takes a long time. I think for creators, we have to find our style, mm-hmm. you know, because I think I tell a lot of people is, all right, you could be good and that's great yeah. to be a good artist. But to find your unique voice, your your own style. Do you feel like you guys have your own style? Josh. Uh, I mean, I feel that way mostly like when I shoot time lapse Mm -hmm. um, because that is, you know, there's not many people that really specialize in that. And it it just what I love about it is that it gives a different perspective of, you know, painting or painting a wall or you know just a sunset or the city you know just like you know going by over 10 minutes and like so i feel i have more of a style when i'm doing that kind of stuff for sure yeah um i there probably is you probably just never had the like i guess like just take a step back and be like, oh, this is how I approach certain things. Yeah, because especially because I don't show what I do very often to mm-hmm. people. I've mm-hmm. just been so like insul- insular mm-hmm. and I just like just keep creating, keep creating, keep creating. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, this is like sounds what I'm trying to get out. No, it's interesting. A lot of people don't even know the intro music. Oh, yeah, that's so funny. That's the, you. The uh, and outro. intro and outro music, uh-huh. anything we've ever yeah. used. I'm just learning this now. Oh, yeah. Any, no, audio, no, any sound on the oh, podcast that's is it. Zach. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I saw Zach. You, you, where do you think it came from? I had no, I don't from know. From us not that wanting you, to be copyright issues. Yeah. I thought that that's you found it on <laughs> some like royalty free SoundCloud <laughs> no, link no, or something. No, 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 this is it. primo stuff right here. That's legit. All in house. That's okay. So yeah. All right. yeah. Well, now I know who to go to when I need some music for a video. Hey, okay. Let's go. It's, Let's go. Uh, it's recorded. You play it that. now. <laughs> right here, you gotta edit and play a little bit of. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Why. Yeah. Is this the kind of that this kind of situation I find myself in a lot where I'm just like, oh yeah, you're just. I would say I'm you know. glad I'm not in your shoes. Somebody who is talented at a lot of things, I would. That would, I don't know how you do it because I felt like all right, I'm good at this one thing, but you, you're like, oh, I love this. this. Yeah. Like I've met people like that, and it like hurts my brain. I'm just like, yeah. you're telling me. It, yeah. I, that's why I feel like I have waves throughout the year. I'm like, I'm really into music, or then I'm really into photography. And each one, I have different ideas that I want to execute and get done. Got like creative ADD. Yeah, it's so irritating. And I need more money to yeah. get these ideas out. We need funding. <clears throat> that's always the thing, just like Yvette said. Yeah, that's true. All right. If we let's say hypothetical, we'll we'll end it up on this. Hypothetical, if we got a huge sponsor to sponsor our podcast, which hasn't happened, but we'll definitely take it. <laughs> a huge budget. What do you think for for season three, ideally, what do you think would be a really cool like episode? Like a dream episode. Mm. Yeah, like location, guest, and uh, like... That's tough. 
I think that'd be cool. Equipment. Who? Equipment. Equipment. Yeah, like what? How? They said we had a, a crazy sponsor with a crazy budget. Hmm. Creative field? Person? What do you mean? As far as guests? Anybody, 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 any location, any like way of documenting this. I mean, I can't really think of like a specific location, mm-hmm. but I don't know. It'd be cool to like to does do it, it in some kind of tower have like a, a little patio deck and do it like in the cube in the yeah, sky deck like a little thing. patio deck is <laughs> chilling like, i mean that would be sick like a rooftop downtown you know podcast doing that would be tight i'm thinking chicago theater that uh, would be sick on the stage on stage um whether people there be there or not i don't know i think it might be cooler without people yeah um a gimbal <laughs> <laughs> well like i mean i'm thinking about it, i'm like We'll rent three of the same cameras yeah. so that my color correction, my Alexa, poor color correction skills would be, uh, <laughs> would hire be somebody to do all post edit. Oh, post. Uh, oh yeah. I would have my motorized slider on the main cam, the wide Ooh, camera, yeah. give we it a little motion, audio doing shotguns. You know. I have no clue what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could, and then, you know, really, you know, we set up the lighting here yeah. in like 30 minutes, but spend two, three hours lighting. Who would be yeah. a good guest? Anybody. I feel like it would be had to be Chicago specific. I'm thinking I I'm, hate the fact that my brain just goes to like rappers. I'm thinking like, who, I gotta who know it, who would it be? Yeah. Who's in your head? Um I would love to have a sit down conversation with Kendrick Lamar. Ah oh, okay. yeah. yeah no that's the that's so that's too good. I know that's like <laughs> the but I feel like it would have to be Chicago right, specific. So Kendrick Trent, Kendrick Lamar mm-hmm. on the rooftop of the Sears Tower. Yeah. Or oh, in, on the top? Or <laughs> in the Chicago Theater. That's the, mm-hmm. the Chicago One Theater the only, only for me because of the velvet. I don't know why. There's something about the oh, velvet. The chairs? Yeah. That sounds really cool. Oh, no. cool look. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, was, it would be cool to do like you know that like reverse stage look. You know, you're always in the seats looking at the stage, exactly. but to be on the stage looking back, That's that would be cool. Insane. On the stage, I don't get it. On the stage, and you're looking at towards looking the out towards the seats. Ah, so you're that's looking the background. Yeah. Okay. Some, yeah. Some I'm gonna make some different. calls. Obama. Just kidding. I, I think Obama would be kind of tight. Of course. <laughs> I mean, Obama, Obama would be all right. Would, yeah. That'd nah. be crazy. <laughs> I'll make a couple phone calls. Yeah. I, don't, I might know. What about Booker? Devin Booker. Oh. See what happens in the next um, couple of weeks. <laughs> Give yeah, that, nah, that sons, and four. Sons, and four. <laughs> sons and four. Sons and four. I just have, think Would you rather Booker or Chris Paul? To interview? Yeah. Um I would I would want to interview Chris Paul just because of his veteran like leadership. I feel like he would have a lot to like point guard. Yeah, the point guy, you know? Like and he's been through so much up and down, yeah. like injuries and so yeah. much different teams. Like for me, I'm all about like the longevity, like, how did you, how are you, like, this durable? You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, it's amazing, but how did you mentally allow yourself to keep going, you know? And now to be on, you know, the hottest team in the Western Conference, you know, it's pretty amazing. Hottest team in the NBA, man. Hottest team in the NBA. <laughs> Sunday <Sound laughs> four, baby. <laughs> I don't watch basketball, but Sacramento Kings forever. So that's... <laughs> Dude, nobody cares about Sacramento Kings. <laughs> Sacramento Kings don't care about Sacramento Kings. <laughs> no, but we, we respect you for staying loyal. I have to be loyal. Not a lot of people would do I'm that. Loyal to the soil. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so now, um, what do you ever want to do in Sacramento? A podcast? Yeah. Oh my God, absolutely. That would be sick. That would be super tight. Yeah. That's well, that's maybe nobody. <laughs> oh my god! Look at this man, Sacramento. Don't allow this man back in your city. Quick. <laughs> I, I'm going to the soil. People that suck. I'm going to be oh going to be bringing god. people in the Sacramento. Edits this, bro. <laughs> we'll get some people from LA. No, I'm, I'm playing. No, there's there's a couple of people in Sacramento that that I really like. Uh, that I would like to pick their brain about. Um, mainly just a lot of friends, really. Yeah. Besides that, uh, there's so some other people that I'm like, get yeah. some funding for this and do a traveling, a podcast tour. Traveling podcast. Well, there, there's some traveling sites. Hopefully we can uh, make happen. Season I three. think we get like an RV. An RV. Yeah. Yeah. Like road, road trip. Road travel? <laughs> or, or Except the, po- the on the bus podcast is a little over. Yeah. <laughs> so we wouldn't do that. Oh, that'd be tight. Grand finale. 
feel that's me? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we end it. Sick. No, but uh, just want to give a shout out to everybody who's listening. You know, I feel like we've had listeners that are every episode. Obviously, we have listeners that are per guest. You can you can always tell. Uh, but I just want to say grateful to everybody who's been listening, you know, for every episode. Season one, I know that was rough, but season two, I feel like we found our rhythm. We're feeling good. And season three, I feel like it's going to be uh, just even more in our rhythm, more guests, more insight. And I just hope it, it reaches more ears is, is the ultimate goal. You yeah, know, more yeah, ears, yeah. more eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Thank you guys. Thank you. Shout Thank out to you. the two gentlemen that you know behind the scenes that make it happen. Shout out to the host. Every week. Yeah, shout out to yeah, the host. Man. I just I somebody hit me up to do a uh to do a podcast for um an event. I was like, man, you gotta talk to these two. I just talk, <laughs> I just run my mouth on a microphone. So uh, thank you. Thank you again, everybody. Thank you too. Yeah. Peace, 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 peace. And cut. Thank you.